Good morning world. Today is Saturday the 13th in Dundestan, Abaco, Bahamas, where I'm attending the funeral of a young man, 45 years old. Uh, we call him Yada. First time I know his name was Leslie. I know it was John, but you learn a lot at these funeral. Leslie John Albury alias Yada. And Abaco is a ticking time bomb. What I see here in the Friendship Tabernacle, um, COVID-19 is gonna have us to have many funerals. Only the wise will survive through this epidemic. I am so afraid of COVID-19 that I'm wearing double mask when I go out. I'm not gonna sit inside a church service, which shouldn't be for three, two hours at all. I was a little uh, taken aback. I saw the uh, waste note in the clip about so much COVID-19 was in North Abaco until I dig deep into my investigation. I was in the Church of God Cathedral in Cooperstown a few weeks ago where, of all people, Minister Darren Henfield that been missing out of Abaco for 35 years, three years since he's been elected. That's 35, 36, 37, 38 years. Darren would say, as he knew her, and been missing for 37 years at the funeral. But that was not the bad part. The bad part is that a lot of people got COVID-19. Some of the preachers got COVID-19. And, and these persons got COVID-19 and became selfish because they never told anybody, like they ashamed that they got COVID-19. One of the boys, fellas, called me, and I took a picture of him standing in the graveyard next to Minister Henfield in Blackwood. He had COVID-19 and he hid it from me, calling me every day, but that, that angered me because he didn't stay one place. He said Maxwell's up and down, knowing that he had COVID-19. I had to hear through the grapevine that a lot of people that attended the funeral got COVID-19. I was at that funeral, but wisely or unwisely, I refused to go inside. I opened the door, and when I saw the amount of people in, I told my friend that was with me, uh, buddy, we can't stay inside there. That's a recipe for disaster. Same thing here today. Huge funeral. Nobody concerned. Uh, some of the fellas out in the parking lot getting bossed up. No mask. No social distance. How could you have social distancing inside the church? Again, this is another recipe because this is a big funeral. You ought to got a big family. He's a loving, loving guy. Big family, a lot of friends, employees. Everybody is here to say goodbye. But should I say goodbye to Yada when Yada wouldn't have opportunity to say goodbye to Kai Mills? I have to protect my safety and be concerned about my whereabouts because I don't think it's any sense for 50, 60 people to get COVID-19 at a funeral. So it's trying times in Abaco. I've been purposely quiet. Somebody called me, say if somebody got my tongue. No, I got my tongue. But sometimes you let the dominoes fall into places because if you come and tell them that the dominoes are about to fall, I'm from the island. Uh, they would say, uh, bearer of bad news. So sometimes you just sit on the side like I'm doing and letting the dominoes fall, fall may they may. But what I have been doing when I speak about events, I'm trying to educate my people. 
when I speak about Minister Henfield, I don't speak about his character as a person. I speak about his lack of representation. The conversation in Abaco today, at the funeral today, it's not about Kai. It is about the person that y'all elected, Minister Darren Henfield, as Member of Parliament for North Abaco. As of today, one year, I lost track, I think it's one year and seven months since Hurricane Dorian. Minister of Foreign Affairs, I don't think he's flying around because nobody's flying anywhere. But he has been on vacation one year and seven months, flying back and forth. I saw him there and it was so embarrassing to see the Prime Minister, the Deputy Prime Minister and the Minister of Foreign Affairs walking through a new community that they have created it since Hurricane Dorian. Over a hundred homes that they have secured because they're in Henfield and the Minister of Immigration has been there three times, lied, completely lied. And they think Abaco people are idiots. But time will tell. This is the fourth time that they went there and said they would do something about the problem. The problem was created by this FNM government. How could a hundred homes be built for mostly illegal? My Lord. And the government of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas have not built one single home for not one single Bahamian. One year. Seven months. But it's, this is the hard part. It's a story for another day. But the homeowners of Baker's Bay have given multi-million up into $10 million and more. Some of the money disappearing, you can't get the right number. I don't want to call the incorrect number. But it's millions of dollars that they've given over one year and four months ago. To date, not a foundation has been poured. Where is the millions? Why haven't the disaster committee told Abaco where it's going to be built, who is going to get it, what is the, what is the uh, format in order to get one of these hosts? Do you have to be FNM? What is the qualification that ought to be explained a year ago? But they got the people money and they're still holding on it. I told you that name, Dr. Livingston Marshall. He is like Peter Nagat. Dr. Livingston Marshall is the dirtiest player on record. And if there were to be a Scotland Yard and the FBI do an investigation of all the people that Dr. Livingston Marshall have corrupted in the governments of this country, You'll just say, wow, wow, the Bahamas, a nation for sale. When are we going to be a country that shows accountability, to have some integrity? That is why Kai running. The agencies that are supposed to protect us, police and defense force, they are being brutal and dishonest and criminals and organized criminals against Abaconians since we escaped with only our lives, the people that's supposed to protect and to serve Kai Mills has been enemy number one. It's one of these Kai care video at the funeral of my friend Yada Albury at the age of 45 gone much too soon Kai Kiss that is why he's here